Hello and welcome to From Sickness to Health. I'm your host, Rico Hill. And I'm Sickness. And today I would like to begin the program by quoting Isaiah 26 and verse 3. It says, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Isn't that an encouraging scripture? Yeah. If you live in a bubble and nothing bothers you. What do you mean by that? I mean, let's be honest, life is stressful. People yeah. have worries. Of course. Kids are stressful. Your job is stressful. Your spouse gets on your last nerve. Health nuts, stress. But hey, I actually enjoy it. Wait, you enjoy stress? Oh, I love it. Think about it. When people are stressed, the biochemistry goes crazy. They're more susceptible to disease and sickness. I find my way in there. And that's what you like. Oh, I love it. I love attention. Oh, it figures. Well, I need you to know that that's not going to happen here today because today our topic is stress. When you're too stressed to be blessed. Well, what do you mean that's not going to happen? Well, it's not going to happen because I'm not going to let you stress me out and anybody else out. Oh, how are you going to do that? Well, it's easy. See, I just start the program. Roll it. That's how I do it. Thank you for joining us here in the studio of From Sickness to Health. We have a rock solid program for you today. And we want to just first start by saying hello to our friend and co-host Sickness, who is remote, somewhere stressing somebody out, I'm sure. <laughs> I know that you're going to be working with somebody somewhere in our office causing stress, so we'll be talking to you in a few moments. But in the meantime, I want to introduce to you the guests, our experts today. And we have with us once again, Dr. Thomas Jackson, mm -hmm. who is a doctor of natural health sciences, but also he runs a ministry, a gospel medical missionary ministry in Huntington, Tennessee, where he is the speaker and director, I think for something like 38 years. Is that right? Yes. Well, we're glad you're here today. Welcome to the program. Oh, good to be here again. Oh, we're glad you're here. And joining us today also is Dr. Camille Clark, who is specializing in internal medicine. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. We're going to talk about stress. We are. We're going to talk about stress. You're not stressed out, are you? No. <laughs> All right. Look at that smile on her face. That, I know. She can't be. She, she, she that might be stressed, but therefore she's doing a good job of handling that stress. That's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Now, I want to do something a little different today. I want to start out by showing a video that really puts into perspective what stress is, how it affects the body. So we're going to run that video and then we're going to go, we're going to go check in with uh, sickness where he is. Let's roll the video. Your body stress affects everything within us. Look at what stress does. You know, stress is one of those things that oftentimes starts in the brain. Your hypothalamus signals your pituitary. The pituitary then signals something called your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands live above your kidneys, and they release something called epinephrine, as well as other stress hormones commonly thought of as adrenaline. Adrenaline then affects your liver, because your liver wants to increase the amount of glucose in your system. What also happens with stress hormones is your heart beats faster, your blood pressure goes up, over time increasing your risk for heart attacks, strokes, very dangerous things. But you know what? It doesn't just affect your cardiovascular system. It also increases inflammation throughout your body, including in your arteries, you know what, it even affects people's breathing, hyperventilation, and other things when you become too stressed. So, hey, what about your GI tract? People can have nausea, vomiting, stress ulcers. Mm -hmm. I know some people that when they get stressed, they actually develop constipation or diarrhea. Oh, yeah. So what you're looking at there is an animation of every single essential organ system in the body being affected by something called stress. And when 80% of Americans report feeling stress in their lives or being overstressed, this is a major problem. And what are a major problem. Mm. Doctors, mm. most people don't know that stress mm. impacts the body in such a universal way mm -hmm. as this, do they? That's true. Mm. Very true. Well, go ahead. And you find that most of us don't realize that nine probably nine ten of our sickness is a result of probably not knowing how to manage stress. It might not be an initiator of sickness, but a promoter. It might accompany like, effects for, uh, accompany like 
improper eating, stress added to that. And so we do not address those things. We may address the, maybe the, physiolog the physiological aspect of sickness, but never the emotions and mm. the mental disposition that, that it has upon our health. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, we're gonna talk about that because we're gonna look at all the various um, uh, health laws that we call them mm -hmm. that can when you violate them when you don't do them mm -hmm. or do too much if you're intemperate or whatever how it will bring on stress yes, but sir. before we get into that we want to see how in a practical way how sickness might be stressing someone out so let's turn to the monitor and see what's going on there <clears throat> Hello, Rico. I'm here in the office of a great stress candidate. You know the thing I love about stress? Is that just about anything can trigger it. Especially all these noises and confusion. Notice how it works. Like when something falls on the floor and breaks. Yeah, or all these phones going off. Oh, just ringing and ringing. It's bill collectors, it's telemarketers. Oh, you're stressing out. Oh, by the way, her boss just called. He needs a report on his desk by the end of the day or else. Imagine that for stress. Oh, you need something to eat, some comfort food right about now, like some fast food or a candy bar. But you and I know a little sugar, that'll just add to her stress levels. Mmm, tastes so good. Last night, she didn't get any sleep. She was stressing about what today would bring. Oh yeah, you know, right about now, you should get a workout in. Mm-hmm, but you don't have time for that. Look at all those emails. Mm-hmm, keep typing, give your fingers some exercise. You know, how about some water? That'll help your stress levels. Not, let's go for exercising with coffee. Mm, I'm gonna pour you some nice coffee here. That'll give you the energy because you didn't get any sleep. Now, her nerves are gonna be wrecked. She won't just be stressed, she'll be anxious too. Back to you, Rico. Wow, poor lady. You know, she almost looked a little familiar to me. But let's talk about this situation. Now, she was, like most people, unaware of all of these factors and how they were impacting her, namely the caffeine. Mm that was also found not only in the coffee, but also in the candy, candy bar. bar. Mm -hmm. Didn't get enough rest, didn't mm -hmm. get enough sleep. Yeah, we're gonna talk about all that, but we wanna just kinda look at stress. Let's really break it down. Mm -hmm. What is stress? Mm -hmm. What is it? So I'm glad you asked that question, Rico, because Stress is very common. It's something that we all have to deal with, all have to face. We have something called stress sores. So as was mentioned before, there are a lot of things in our lives that can cause stress. It can be family, it can be responsibilities, it can be job, it can be finances, deadlines. And stress is actually our reaction to it. And even going back to the video there, they mentioned what happens in the body on a physiological level when you are stressed out. So your heart pumps faster, mm -hmm. you're trying to deliver blood, your GI system is not stopping to digest mm -hmm. because there are more important things to take care of right now. You don't need to be eating your food, but you need to be utilizing your energy. So there are positive reactions to stress and negative reactions to stress. For instance, if a bear comes out when you're walking in the hill, is that time to relax? <laughs> Take it easy. It's time to run. It's time to run. Or fight. <laughs> That's I think right. you're referring to the fight or Absolutely. flight response. Absolutely, the sympathetic response. That's the sympathetic response. Absolutely. We call it. Okay. So in that moment, your heart beating faster, your mm. digestive system cooling mm. down a little bit so that you can deal with that Get immediate. Get a rush of adrenaline. Absolutely. So you need that adrenaline, you need that epinephrine, you need all of that to react. But the danger comes in when you're dealing with that on a constant mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. On a constant mm -hmm. basis. And it's having a continual effect mm -hmm. on your body mm -hmm. and wearing out your system and you're mm -hmm. keeping on going and not taking yeah, that yeah. time to rest, to relax, to rejuvenate. Because mm -hmm. our bodies were not made to continually be under right. that amount of stress. You know what's interesting is that you talk about the bear. 
the bear, I, I won't tell the story now, but there was one time that I was on a hike and I was chased by a bear. Mm -hmm. And I know a little something about <laughs> adrenaline <laughs> coming out of your system and just going through That's your right. system right. so that you could run. Now, I'm here today because of uh, adrenaline. <laughs> <some stress. laughs> I mean, now, I don't want to hold you to that, but you know, I've done a little research on bears here. <laughs> you know, I heard that they can, uh, in a straight line, they can run the speed 19.6 seconds. That's right, that's right. But they you know not, what? Mm -hmm. There's something called angels. Okay, come on now. That's what I feel. Yeah, yeah, that's so good. I had a little, I had the double uh, A. I tell a you. A little bit of adrenaline, adrenaline and some and angels. angels. That's right. So let's continue on with this discussion. So very excellent points about what really is happening. So, but stress is something that is usable. It's good for the body. It's, yeah, it's something yeah. that we all experience. Yeah. In, fa in fact, Stress is, is, it happens when we're lifting weights, right? Yeah, the tension, the stress tension. upon the muscles to be, develop muscles. Stress is valuable in one sense that if you're going to develop mental uh, power, you've got to tax your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, in a spiritual sense, trials and tests brings about developing character. Uh -huh. And so when a woman is about ready to bring forth a child, that's stressed there in the labor. <laughs> she can testify to that no, one. I can't testify oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've heard it. I've seen it. So you're not there yet. Okay. But stress is valuable. And as is mentioned, it can be also adverse. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I understand with stress, stress become dangerous when mm -hmm. it, it, it exceeds my ability mm -hmm. to respond constructively. Yeah. So, uh -huh. so the, the intensity of it and the duration of it. And so if it exceeds my capacity to respond, as, as Doc mentioned, the stressors. Uh, I say you've been working for 24 years, you still got a mortgage on your house, all of a sudden you lay it off. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. yes, yes. All right, that's stress. Mm -hmm. You've been off for about a year, two years. You know, that's the duration, the intensity. So how do we respond to that? will determine the impact stress have on my life. You follow now, what I'm saying? Now, I follow what you're saying. Now, there is a, a landmark um, experiment um, where, and, and I've heard you share this before, of the cat, because Dr. Clark mentioned that yes. our digestive system, system that's right. goes into like, almost like a hibernation. It stops that's absolutely while right. there is stress. That's right. Now, what is this, this thing with the cat? And the cat, and, and, we, and I coined that because it's pinching the cat's tail. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a doctor from Harvard University did a research on how stress impacts digestive system. Mm -hmm. This is in the late 1950s, et cetera. So what they did with this cat, they surgically inserted a x-ray machine into the cat to monitor the flow of digestion. So while the cat was eating calmly and purring, digestion flowed smoothly. Mm -hmm. Then the doctor went over and pinched the cat's tail, and the cat became angry in feline fashion. <laughs> right. So that immediately mm -hmm. stopped digestion. Mm -hmm. And so as the cat was calmed down, then digestion flowed back. So what he was trying to determine how stress, worry, anger mm -hmm. can interfere with the flow of even digestion, mm -hmm. even the best diet. I mean, you can be on the best organic plant-based diet, which I'm not knocking that, praise God, for it. Mm -hmm. And your body is on unmanageable stress. That food will ferment in your system, therefore producing toxins or poisons. Auto-intoxication. Auto-intoxication, stress. And so this is why we have to be very mindful how to address the impact of stress upon our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I like what you just said. You said even though the food that you may be eating is good food. Mm -hmm. However, when this particular food is being taken in while there is stress, right. I always like to say eating is sacred. Yes. In other words, you don't eat while you're actually writing bills. <laughs> That's a good point. Right? That's right. Or you don't and while sit you're down, angry. Or while you're angry. angry. That's right. Or you don't sit down and eat and have a conversation about something that is going to cause stress because you will not benefit from that wonderful meal that you're having. Is that I right? I call it pinching Rico. my tail. <laughs> it's the sickness. Oh, that's, uh, hold on a second. Let's, Stressing us we've, got a, we've got a perspective here. Uh, what, what do you have to share here, sickness? Well, I don't know if I'm allowed to speak since I'm not wearing suspenders like the rest of y'all. <laughs> anyway, so look, here's the thing. People have comfort foods. That's how we deal with our stress. 
So now you're trying to stress us out that we can't have comfort foods? What are you saying? Now, I know what you're thinking out there. You're saying, yes, comfort food. We love it. But we need to talk about that, don't mm -hmm. we? Because Indeed. when we're talking about comfort food, mm -hmm. we're talking about things that may even be contributing mm -hmm. true. to stress. Mm -hmm. Sugar, refined white sugar. Talk about mm -hmm. that, Dr. Camille. So, comfort foods, what are they? Well, for a lot of the ladies out there, it's some chocolate. <laughs> chocolate has a lot of sugar. And you're right, it does make you feel good for a time. But in terms of the glycemic index, what is that doing to your body? It gives you a temporary high, and then what happens afterwards? You get a low. Yeah. And so you're feeling even worse than you were feeling before. So while a lot of the comfort foods may give a temporary buzz, mm -hmm. the long-term effect is actually even worse than where mm -hmm. you started before. Mm -hmm. Wow, so in, that, um, in the video we saw mm -hmm. there with sickness and the office worker, mm -hmm. we saw that mm -hmm. she was having not only some sugar that also, which has caffeine and it was chocolate, mm -hmm. right? You talk about the chocolate and, and the ladies, yeah? But also there was coffee. Mm -hmm. Caffeine. Caffeine, so she was getting like a double express mm -hmm. of express, mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we see that the foods, what other foods uh, are we talking about that can cause stress? Stress, or as you already mentioned, sugar is one. Sugar is one. Because number one, two, sugar not only robs the body of B vitamins, which is also necessary to support the central nervous system, mm -hmm. calcium. We find sugar turns to alcohol in the body. So that means it depreciates oxygen to the brain. And we find that uh, outside of sugar, you mentioned caffeine, the theobromine that's within the chocolate. You find even fried foods itself can suppress the body. Uh, receptors or, or stress receptors. Uh, you find that, you know, without food, dehydration does the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, we can go on and on. Those are some of the main fo uh, foods, sugar, uh, soft drinks, you know, uh, these, these beverages with mm -hmm. carbonated drinks would mm -hmm. also produce, you know, stress. So all of this attacks the adrenal glands, the mm -hmm. kidneys, the liver. Uh, these things definitely impact the body to a degree where the body got to cope with it. The body got to adjust and, and, with it. If I can just jump in real quick, what we're talking about here is when you're eating uh, processed sugar, you're walking around basically in a pro-inflammatory state constantly. And uh, if you don't believe that, all you have to do is visit, say, an um, uh, emergency room mm -hmm. after Halloween mm. when people have had, you know, copious amounts of chocolate and white refined sugar. They are, their immune system is suppressed and therefore they end up being sick. Mm -hmm. Stressed, there's a stress on the body and they didn't even know it. That's true. That's right? That's Let's true. talk about some other things. How about water? You've got water right here. Yeah. Uh, you drink too much water, you get stressed out, or you don't drink enough? Which is it? <laughs> when you don't drink enough. When you Definitely. don't drink enough water. Right, Talk about right. that for a second. Because you get dehydrated. The Dehydration. body is made mostly of water, and so when it's depleted and you're not replacing it, then your body's kind of out of balance, mm -hmm. and so you do see the effects. I do want to go back a little bit, though, to the sugar thing, if that's okay, just sure. for a moment. Mm -hmm. So we talk about, so sugar is not bad. There are different types of sugars. Mm -hmm. There are natural Thank sugars, you okay? Mm -hmm. um, there are natural sugars in the body that are necessary for us to function. Mm -hmm. If we need to fight or flight or do it, we mm -hmm. have to glucose. do we, we need glucose. Sure. We need glucose. That's what the body, the cells use on an individual level to help you carry out whatever tasks. What we're talking about are the refined sugars, mm -hmm. the simple sugars, the ones that are not going to be sustained. Added sugar. Right, the added sugar that are not going to be sustained at a mm -hmm. healthy level in your mm -hmm. body, mm -hmm. but rather it's going to give you that spike and then... Um, that downfall that's going to cause a lot of the stressful for reactions that we're talking about. So I think it's important to clarify, you know, mm -hmm. it's not all of it that's bad, but we're talking about the process mm -hmm. and the simple mm -hmm. and the refined Thank sugar. Thank you for that. Thank and, you for that. Yeah. Because we would have had people leave from saying, wow, they're saying you can never have anything sweet, but you can actually have things that are sweet. Obviously, we've talked about that on another program. We're talking about the white refined processed mm -hmm. sugar that's mm -hmm. depleted of minerals. It's yeah. essentially poison. It really mm -hmm. is. But you can use honey. You can use stevia. You can use maple syrup. Mm -hmm. You can use different uh, types of yeah. sugar, cane mm -hmm. sugar mm -hmm. that is not processed. Mm -hmm. That is a good sugar. So mm -hmm. thank you for clarifying mm -hmm. that. What about exercise? Let's go back also to water situation okay. because as Doc said that our body is over 80% water and we find that when our bodies become dehydrated, God designed the body to compensate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the body will have to take water from certain areas of the body. And there's several areas. And one of the areas is the brain. Mm -hmm. The brain is 80% water. And so we can end up with what we call cerebrum dehydration. Mm -hmm. 
and that can create an, uh, interference with the electrical current in our brain, mm -hmm. and that also can produce uh, uh, depression. Lack of water can also facilitate depression, mm -hmm. memory loss. So oh. water is essential for our body. Right. Wow, wow, mm -hmm. did you hear that? We're talking about water, not having enough water, you actually can become not only stressed out, but depressed. That's right. And one thing that I say, Rico, if anybody irritates you, provoke you, take a water break. <laughs> Let's talk about exercise real quick. Now, exercise, we, we realize that we have to manage our stress because stress is natural, right? But how does exercise play into this? A lot of people live sedentary lifestyles. They're just kind of in front of the television. They're having their chocolate. They're having their caffeine. They're doing whatever they want to do. And their body is stressed. They don't know it. And then they're adding to it by not exercising. How does exercise play? Then I want to talk about sleep. So let's. Oh, I can handle this one. Yeah, I'll answer your question about exercise. You want to talk about stress? You have to plan to go to the gym. You have to get dressed up to exercise. You have to actually go there. Oh man, you talk about stress. Look, people walking these days, this is the 21st century. That's why we have cars. <laughs> Do we agree with this? You know, he makes really good points. So. <laughs> you tell me blue, okay. you tell me blue, it's what, tell true. Me, tell but me the good know point what? he made. <laughs> it may seem like it's very stressful mm -hmm. to get dressed up, to go to the gym, to exercise, but what actually happens when you are in the process of exercising is completely different. So the body releases natural endorphins that make you feel better and your stress is actually relieved as a result. So initially it may seem like yeah, this is a very stressful process that I have yeah. to go through, but I think for a lot of us, especially right. for me, you know, as long as I can get myself to the gym, once I'm there, I actually feel a lot better. And you know what? You don't necessarily have to go to the gym. You don't have to go to the gym. You, you can just gym. take a walk yeah. on the on outdoors. You That's walk right. right out your house and go for a walk. And, That's and, exercise. And, <laughs> instead of uh, fighting for that parking spot close to uh, Walmart interest, park at the end of there the parking go. lot and walk there. There mm -hmm. you go. Instead of, instead taking, of taking the elevator, <laughs> take the stairs. Take the stairs. Take the stairs. Oh, How about sleep? Does uh, mm -hmm. lack of sleep, too much sleep, can that stress us out? Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that when you actually are on uh, certain uh, social media sites, mm. two o'clock in the morning, mm. your body doesn't know it, thinks you should be in bed sleeping. It thinks you're being chased by a bear, mm. releasing cortisol. And can that put weight on you? Almost definitely, yes. And the Bible tells us, you know, it is not wise to rise up early to stay up, you know, I mean, rise up early and go to bed late. That's right. You get my beloved sleep. We find that sleep is a recharging process, mm -hmm. especially as impact upon the nervous system. Yes. And also there's a time because during the daylight time, there's a hormone, you know, a neurotransmitter called serotonin mm -hmm. that is, you know, synthesized into what we call melatonin. Oh, melatonin. As yes. the sun sets, you know, it's time for us to rest. So between certain hours, our body's producing these hormones, recharging our batteries because, you know, cake's important. You go home tonight, leave your car battery, I mean your car light on all night, you understand. Mm -hmm. and the fact is you won't be able to start the car because the battery is drained. And so sleep deprivation definitely impacts our stress level. Case in point, during the Gulf War, during the Gulf War, there is a situation called blue on blue or friendly fire. United States Navy personnel were mistaking their own airplanes for the enemy. They were shooting at their own airplanes. And this continues to happen until they began to get some, do a little research and assessment of the situation. Mm -hmm. And they found out that the personnel was sleep deprived. Ah. Sleep deprived, it affected their judgment. Mm -hmm. And so sleep definitely has a great impact upon how we deal with stress. Mm -hmm. So in our own families, we might be doing a little friendly fire. Friendly fire, we might be mm -hmm. arguing, fighting, shooting at one another and because we are sleep deprived. Mm -hmm. Well, we're mm -hmm. almost out of time here, but you know, uh, I think it all comes down to, do we trust God? Mm. Do we trust God who told us that we need to drink water? We need to eat uh, the right foods. We need to get exercise. exercise. We need to go to bed and have our bodies function according to the circadian rhythm. Now, there was a, a professor who came into her class with a glass of water like this. And she said, you know, how much water is in here? And they took guesses, eight ounces, six ounces, and various things like that. And 
as she held it out, she says, if I hold it for a minute, what will happen? She said, well, you know, my arm will get a little tired. If I hold it for an hour, what will happen? Well, your arm will start to get achy. You'll have aching in the arm. But if I hold it all day long, what will happen? Well, the arm will become paralyzed. And the point she was making, stress is like that. Mm. We have to, we'll have it, we'll have stress, but we have to put it down. Put it down. Mm. We have to put it down. We have to manage it. Mm. And more importantly, we have to trust in God. God has designed us that if we don't trust him, we'll stress out. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. That's Proverbs chapter 3, 5 and 6. Well, this has been another very informative program, hasn't it? I mean, lots of really good information that I think is going to help people. No? Well, what I think is really fascinating is that when we trust in our own selves, our own ways, and not God, the human body is designed to stress out. We ultimately manage stress by trusting in God. So they say. Oh, you don't believe it? Well, of course I do. But haven't you learned anything from me today? I really haven't. Okay, I get people to trust me and not what God has said, and then they get sick. I mean, I don't really know what I'm talking about. I just say stuff. But hey, I call it planting reasonable doubt. That's my thing. And I call it sick. No, 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 no. Sick nets. Well, you know what? I can't deny that. You keep trying to cause doubt. I'll just keep sharing the truth that leads not only to health, but also to eternal life. Look, friends, we have an invitation from a loving Savior who has said to us, Come, all who labor and are heavy laden with burdens. He promises to give us rest. In other words, trust Him more and stress less. We can cast all of our cares on Him because He cares for us. I cannot say the same for the one who would want to cause you stress. 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. I'm Rico Hill. And I'm Sickness. Maranatha. Hey, did anyone turn in a wallet? Hmm. <laughs> Probably in my car. Stay calm. Where are my keys? How about a set of keys? Oh, man. Oh, my keys. They're in my backpack. Oh, man. Where's my backpack? Uh, how about a backpack? Oh, man, this is not good. My cell phone is in my backpack. I'm stressing out. I'm getting on my nerves now. Oh, man.